We'd now like to welcome to the stage Olaf Peter Henschel, simulation engineer at Volkswagen AG. He will present a method that allows the calculation of seat vibrations at the driver's contact point based on the vibration of the seat rail using our NVH simulator. The results will be compared with a direct measurement of seat vibration at the touch point. Yes, first of all, thank you all for the opportunity to speak in front of you, such a big audience. I hope you've enjoyed your coffee and we can start with the first technical presentation. Uh, the main um, reason or effort for this presentation is to show what the gap between our process we are using for calculation, NVH calculation mostly, and how we could replay this calculation results into a NVH simulator. So currently we are using it mostly to replay, for example, competitors to check how is the difference between several cars regarding the NVH specification, but um, the main idea of our simulator is to use it for replaying calculation results. And so within this presentation, I would like to show you how we are calculating, first of all, our models. That's the typical process at Volkswagen, which is currently used. And in the next step, what we have to do or how we have to yeah, change probably the models with a small um, effort not to increase the calculation process for the engineers because it's uh, with about three months quite fast concerning the calculations. And uh, I would like to show it how to um, do it regarding seat measurements, for example, to uh, replay the calculations in such a simulator. And uh, with, within this, I would like to yeah, explain to you this ACTF method we are using um, regarding our calculation process. Um, so how does it look, such an MBH calculation? We are trying to build up all the parts of the car. That means starting at the axis with the suspension, all the bearings, the mountings, the several parameters I used, also the tire models which are required for such an NVH calculation, and of course also the engine is integrated with its mountings and its bearing and so on. And what is necessary, yeah, mostly necessary, is the trim body, which is also put in, covered onto uh, the axis, and you have the whole car modeled within. If you, have, uh, if you look at this video, perhaps, you could imagine we are calculating everything in time domain, but mostly we are doing it in frequency domain concerning yeah, the time and the possibilities to calculate our models and to have the possibility to be quite fast, changing some parts and so on. And that's why we are using frequency domain models. And so, such a typical MBH calculation model looks like this. You have your finite element trim body, the axis, the tires, some outer spectras, uh, cross spectras, which are used to excite the several tires. And you have a closer look at, for example, uh, steering wheel point, nine o'clock, for example, uh, at the vibrations of these points. Or also the seat rails. And that's one of the main problems. Because currently in our process to evaluate, for example, the trim body, we have a closer look at the seat rail vibrations in the several directions, that means X, Y, and Z. It's efficient and it's also quite good because the scatter concerning these values is quite slow, uh, low. But nevertheless, if you would like to replay these values in an NV8 simulator we are using, it's not sufficient because what we need is directly this acceleration between the seat and the driver. For example, measured by such a seat pad or um, yeah, such, such two seat pads. And what we have to do is we have to probably increase our models to ensure that using these uh, seat ray vibrations, it is possible to calculate these seat pads. And um, why are we using, once again, why are we using the seat ray vibrations for the calculations? Because they are mainly unaffected of the driver. Whether a driver sits in the car or not, you get nearly the same 
vibration. It's shown on, on this slide. Over there you can see uh, a measurement. These are measurements with driver and without the driver on the seat. And you can directly see that the values are nearly the same. And so it's quite OK if you use for your NVH calculation process these seat vibrations without the driver in the model, in the trim body model. But how could we do it to ensure or calculate much more these uh, seat pad vibrational points, which are quite necessary for our, our NVH simulator, which is used. And one idea would be you could put into your car or model a human body model, which, for example, the same number of degrees of freedom as the car model with some, I don't know, springs and so on in the contact region, un unrealistic. Too, too much model for extremely complex and for an NVH model within a car, not usable. And if you have the imagination, what I mentioned before, you have about three months for such a model calculation not usable. The next step would be you perform a measurement of the seat with a driver on it using some seat pads and measure really the transfer functions of this seat in the several directions, x, y, z, at the several points also. Perform a seat transfer function, and then what you have to do, or the calculation engineer has to do, he has to throw out the seat out of the car, the structure, the mechanical structure which was prior um, in it, and you have to put in your seat transfer function. It's also a quite bigger effort regarding the calculation and also the modeling. And so our idea is, why shouldn't we keep the models as they are and we try to measure something like an acceleration transfer function? So that means we have a closer look at the several points at the seat rail, at the clamping points of the seat in all the directions regarding the several accelerations. And after it, we using this acceleration, so you will calculate the seat pad accelerations. That means in this interaction point between seat and driver. This has two main advantages. The first one, the modeling effort for our calculation engineers is quite slow because you could do it also in a post-processing. So that means if you get all these accelerations at the several seat points, or seat ray points, you can calculate afterwards your seat pads. Or if you use something like a include that doesn't affect the trim body itself, only has a closer look at the several seat vibration accelerations, so you can calculate directly it's in your model. And it's not necessary to throw the seat out, but necessary is concerning the seat acceleration transfer function that it doesn't affect the trim body on itself. So um, now what we've tried to do, first of all, that's the main topic of this presentation, how we have measured the C transfer function and how we have validated it. We've done it using measurements, first of all. So a closer look at it, as I mentioned before, we have nearly no influence of the driver on the seat ray vibrations, and that's why we are using also no drivers in our NVH models when we calculate them. And um, the seat transfer function looks like that. So what we get or what we grab is, oh, that doesn't work, the pointer. But you have a closer look at the several seat ray positions, the clamping of the seat. Afterwards, you have your transfer function, which you have to measure. And at the, at the left side, left-hand side of this equation, you have the seat pad vibrations with the usable afterwards also for the NPH simulator. So if you make open it closely, so you have the several directions, x, y, z for each point, and the transfer function had nearly 72 frequency dependent complex values, which you have to identify. And how we have identified them, it's only shown here for one case, that means x, one direction, Excited. What is necessary for this measurement is you have to have a quite flexible measurement engineer concerning the uh, impacts, and you have a quite need to have a quite patient uh, driver in the car. 
If you're performing like that, you need also some accelerometers at the several clamping points of the seat and also the seat beds. And doing it through all the clamping positions in all directions, you are afterwards, have afterwards the possibility to calculate such a seat transfer function. So it's only typical shown for um, the amplitude, not the complex value. At the right-hand side, once again, the several seat points. At the left-hand side, our seat pads, which are required for the measurements. So for the measurements and also for the calculation, which we get. So um, what have we done after identifying the C transfer function? Uh, we have compared it directly on track. So what you can do is you can measure the seat pads directly using the seat pads on its own. And you can use the several accelerometers at the, each uh, clamping position of uh, the seat. And using this acceleration transfer function, you can once again calculate this seat pad values. And on the next slide, shown, it's a, it was a coupled surface, a coast down of a car. And the, yeah, they, the, the results look quite well. So that means using, that's a mean value through the frequency over three drivers using uh, five measurements. There you can see that the um, uh, results are quite well regarding the measurements of the pads itself in black and regarding the calculation of the pad values in blue shown over there in the several directions. So um, what we've also done, we had a closer look at the scatter uh, regarding the measurement and the calculation. What I mentioned prior was also the pads have one major problem, that's the scattering effect, which you can uh, identify. Uh, also shown here, the three drivers with five measurements. There you can see at the left-hand side, a bigger scatter than, of course, using one transfer function, and the three drivers using this uh, seat rail points, the scatter is quite lower. But the mean values of both are nearly the same. This procedure is usable also for different surfaces. That means on the left-hand side, a coupled surface. On the right-hand side, a rough surface. Only shown, I won't go into detail concerning the, these values, but what's interesting is the uh, calculation results are quite the same as the measured results. And yeah, that's the main thing I wanted to show to you. And what are the next steps which we have to do? First one is we have to measure different seats to get something like a library of different seats, of bigger cars and smaller cars and so on, which we can use as a transfer function for our NVH calculation models. And what we would like to do in addition, we would like to apply or we have to apply these acceleration transfer functions in our calculation process. That means we are using uh, mostly Nestran for the calculation, for the MBH calculation. And this acceleration transfer function, uh, it's important that it has no effect on the structure when you calculate. It should only take some, some the, the values of the accelerations and calculate once again accelerations afterwards. So that means you have to use some negative stiffnesses and so on to uh, perform these calculations. Yeah. That's all. Thank you very much.